Hi everybody, it's Monday afternoon and I am Coach Rebecca here for our weekly Facebook Live Q&A session. And if you're just coming to join us for the first time, I'll tell you a little bit of background on me. I am a uh, sports psychology um, master's degree and I have been working with high performing young athletes for over 15 years. And my specialties are helping people overcome fear and also build confidence and find flow. And I do this in two different ways. One is through the Perform Happy Community, which is an online mental toughness training center where you, there are courses on overcoming fear, finding flow, building confidence. There are five and seven day challenges that kind of kick the fear boosting um, into high gear. And we also do live trainings. And what we're doing this month is mental toughness boot camp. So if you haven't joined us already, you can go over to performhappy.com and check it out. I believe it's all sold out, um, but you can get yourself on the wait list so that next time we open the doors, you can get the notification first. Okay, so now on to our question from a member of the Perform Happy community. I always prioritize member questions, and I've been getting so many questions lately that I'm glad I've chosen to do it this way because it makes sure that you know the members get, um, get the most access to me, and that's the way I had intended it. This gymnastics mom says... My daughter wants to quit. She has struggled with the, with the fear issues for a couple of years, but she seems to finally be overcoming it and doing her skills. Do I encourage her to hang in there or support her decision? Okay, first of all, hooray, congratulations. Your daughter has overcome her fear. I mean, this is something that I know she's been struggling with for a long time, and a lot of the members in the community have joined for the same reason, because they want to learn to overcome fear. And now she says she wants to quit. And this is something that I've had, you know, a handful of conversations with just in the last seven days with parents where they are like, well, my kid needs to stick with it because X, Y, and Z. They need to, you know, get over their demons and don't quit out of fear. Make sure that they get their skills before they quit. And, or in this case, she's getting her skills and now she's a, like on the brink of success and she wants to quit. What do I do? What's the best thing? So I've, I'm gonna give you guys some ideas on how to have that conversation, um, some of the pros and cons of quitting, and then just the questions to ask so that you can make sure that you're supporting your child in the very best way. So the first thing is you have to listen. You know, the second I read this question, what popped into my head was communicate, ask her. You know, should I let her quit? Well, I don't know, ask her, don't ask me, but I'm gonna give you my ideas, but she's the one who ultimately you got to create a safe space to communicate with her so that you can have, you know, that potentially difficult conversation and know if it's the right thing to do for her, for the family, for her future, for her self-esteem, all of that. So the, the first thing is I always send people back to there's a, in the Perform Happy community, we have a course, it's a bonus course called Peak Performance Parenting. And one of the main things I teach in there is exactly how to talk to your kid, how to listen in the right way, how to respond in the right way. So use those methods and make sure that you are listening in a really empathic way, creating a safe space, coming from a place of neutrality, making sure that you're not, and this one is really hard, but not pushing your own agenda. Of course, you have dumped so much money into this sport, so many hours, and probably part of you is like, oh my gosh, I could like have so much money left or I don't have to do that on weekends. There's part of you that's probably like, that's not the worst idea, but at the same time, you're like, but I don't want to, I don't want my kid to look back and regret, you know, and I was one of the kids who quit out of fear. Do I regret it now? Absolutely not, because that's my whole livelihood today is using my experience to help other people. So I know that my path unfolded exactly the way it was supposed to, you know, when I was 17, I had these thoughts like, gosh, what if I would have kept going? But I know today that my path was my path and it was exactly right. So one thing, of, you know, for anybody who's ever worried about making a decision, I don't believe there are such thing as wrong decisions. It's just, you know, this consequence or that consequence. And either way, you're going to learn something if you're open to it. And if you can move through your life learning from mistakes, from successes, then that's where you get a worthwhile life. So that's what we want for our kids, right? A worthwhile life. If we can help our kids learn about themselves and make decisions based on inner truth and intuition rather than fear or, you know, not wanting to be uncomfortable, then we're raising good kids. So here are, here are the, like basically the way I see it 
the pros and cons of um, quitting versus not quitting. You know, some of the benefits of letting your child walk away and then some of the drawbacks of letting your child walk away. Uh, for the pros, it's always good to encourage them to experiment with other forms of self-expression. You know, we get into this early specialization, which makes for really skilled athletes in one sport or one activity, but because of the amount of hours it's required, kids are not really able to express themselves in different ways. And I know it was, I used to do soccer and I did gymnastics and I, um, I was in the choir and I did cheerleading. I did like all these different things. But then it was, there was a time where my mom was like, pick one girlfriend. I only have one car. Like I, there's only one me and I got to get you there. So pick one. And I had to pick gymnastics, which I loved, but maybe I would have liked singing and maybe I would have liked dancing. And there's a lot of things I didn't try as a result. So that's something that you can, you can allow her to express herself elsewhere. Uh, she, she might have other gifts she doesn't even know about. A lot of the times parents are like, but I can't let her quit. She's so talented. She's so capable. But I remember the kids that I used to coach in gymnastics, we would, it would be so hard to get a commitment from them because they're so talented, but they're also really good at soccer. And they're also really good at climbing rocks and like really good at, there's, you know, usually the quote unquote, and you know, you guys know, I don't love the word talent because really hard work pays off a lot more than, you know, talent. But anyway, these kids who are good at one thing are probably going to be good at other stuff too. So she might have gifts that she needs to explore elsewhere that she can feel really good about. Yeah, early specialization. It's it's a necessary evil if you want to go into a certain sport and and have a lot of um, a lot of success. But there are a lot of there's a lot of debate around early specialization if it's really the best for our kids. I'm not going to put my opinion here, but maybe I'll write about that at some point. Um, something to consider is that it's supposed to be fun. Yes, I fully believe in experiential learning. I believe that when you are in the fire, you learn what you're made out of. She wants to try track and drama. Awesome. That would be, I mean, those are, those are really good places to like, if you're a drama queen like me, I was actually suggested that I try drama, haha, <laughs> uh, but she might, you know, she might be able to express herself in that way and still get her endorphins going in track. I mean, there's, there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do life, but so I know I'm like really cheerleading the, the like, go ahead and quit, but don't worry. I'm going to give you guys some cons too. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be fun. You, you should be working hard. You should be pushing yourself to the edge so that you can really know who you are and what you're made out of. And I think that's absolutely the reason that I am happy and content today is because of all the fire I went up against in my life. Um, save that one for, okay, another Q and A. My thoughts on early specialization. Okay, it's on the list. Um, and, but at the same time, this is our one life and we really should be enjoying it. So if I'm like moping through years of my life because I'm supposed to be getting better at life through trial and error, like, ugh, I don't know. There's a point where your intuition and your gut have to come in and, and let you know that maybe there's something different out there. Um, the, let's see, what else did I put on my list of pros? T okay, hey, I just mentioned my intuition. That's where I was heading next. This is an opportunity to allow your kid to speak from their heart, trust their gut, and, and lean on their intuition. And in my fear course, one of the biggest things that I teach is that you have to be able to listen to your intuition. You listen to your brain, you listen to your heart, because your brain and your heart know what's right for you. When we go against it, that's when we actually create these mental blocks because our brains and our hearts have to revolt in order to keep us safe. So if she, this is something that actually I thought of, and it may or may not be right, but I thought that maybe the reason why she's overcoming her fears is because she's learning to trust her heart and her intuition. And that might be the reason why she's speaking up about not having fun. I could be way off, but that was kind of my intuitive thought around it is that maybe this is a really positive side effect of the fact that she now is in touch with what's true and right for her. I don't know. That was just my thought. So take that for what it is. Okay, now on to the cons. One of the main reasons why kids struggle in sports is because of social issues. And being in that adolescent age, you know, between 10 and 14, social issues become a pressure cooker. If a coach is humiliating her, 
if a teammate is rolling their eyes at her, if, if she's comparing herself to, yeah, I'm getting my skills back, but I should be over there with Susie doing that level if I had got my skills back sooner. I should be over here. I'm older, I'm taller. I had a lot of that. I was older and taller. And I, I had to really be careful to not compare myself to the little seven-year-old level seven who was kicking my butt every day. Because I just knew, you know what, I got a later start. I'm a little bit more afraid. I'm a little bit more slow going. And that's just me. But that's a really important thing to cover with her. Because if it is a social issue, then that might be something that you can help resolve with her. Not for her, but with her. That might be something, you know, if you can talk to the coach, if you can talk to um, other parents. I know this is like the hardest stuff, but that would be something really worth looking into is, is there a social issue that's making her want to not deal? Uh, and then something I was just reading recently is Michelle Obama's, um, her list of things that like how to raise your kid or whatever, and whether or not you're a fan, um, she, I kind of liked her concept where she has her daughters do two sports, one she picks and one they pick. And the one they pick, they just get to do whatever they want. And she picks one that that puts them in a position where they have to work hard because it doesn't necessarily come as easy to them. And I have various thoughts on this, but I thought it was really interesting because, uh, you know, every parent has this whole like, um, what's the right way? Should I push my kids? Should I let them off the hook? Should they have fun? Should they be challenged? You know, every family is so different. There's definitely value in struggle and not having instant gratification, but I think any sport really with good coaches is going to provide that. And, and it's really up to you. You know, do you want to have your kid be miserable? Is it going to be worth it? Maybe. I don't know. Um, but that if it's just your ego, that's like, I have to look like a good parent by pushing my kid through this check, check yourself, you know, check in and, and think, is, am I trying to be a good parent? <laughs> if so, like shush that and check in with your own intuition and your own heart. What's right for you? What feels right? Okay. She's saying, that's what I feel. She's frustrated because she's no longer, it's no longer coming easily. She's tired of the struggle, you know, and maybe it is. And it doesn't mean that any other sports going to have less struggle. Uh, but this, so this is my next, my next portion of our talk here is what to do, how to talk to her. So I'm going to give you guys some suggestions on what to say if this is coming up for you, the types of questions you want to ask your kid. Um, the first one is who chose the sport to begin with? Was it you? Was it her? And, and why did she love it? What does she like about it? What's she good at? Um, trying not to let her run because it's not easy. That's life. Life is not easy. Life is definitely not easy um, and there's and there's no right answer. But yeah, like allow these questions to kind of stir inside of you and then have that open conversation and let her know, you know what, honey, I am totally open to what this life has to hold for you. I know that I don't know everything. I care about you so much. I want the best for you. I want to, I want to help you grow into a strong, confident woman. And I want to do whatever I can to do that, even if it means you're uncomfortable, but at the same time, you know, you're going to, you're going to let her fight her own battles. She says she chose it and she continued because she was good. She wasn't so good last year. Okay. So there might be, there might be, a, there might be more challenge to be had here, but bottom line, have a conversation with her. You know, here's some other questions that I recommend parents in this position ask. Um, is she mentally, physically burned out? Does she need a break? Maybe she needs a break. I mean, I've, I've worked with a couple of girls who were elite training with the best of the best and they became so miserable that they ended up quitting and then were able to come back later. I actually personally coached a girl who the fun kind of had left for her, two girls, and then they came back because they wanted to, because they enjoyed it. They, had, they weren't really worried about going to college. They weren't worried about being the best on their team. They weren't even worried about the kids that passed them up in the levels. They just came back for fun and they had so much more fun than anybody else on the team because it was so obviously their choice to be there. And one of them said, you know, I'm going to do this through high school and it's going to, I'm going to do the best I can and get as far as I can. So it doesn't mean that if she takes a break, she can never go back. I mean, that's something, a common misconception, especially in an, a young sport. You know, if you start really young, then you, you lose your momentum. Not necessarily. It depends on what you're going, what you're going for. Um, oh, okay. So the next question is, are the practices harder than before? If she's having to work harder, if she's up leveled, if she has 
got in a position where the discomfort is outweighing the fun for right now, then yeah, I mean, that, that might be a reason for her to like kind of not feel her joy. So how can she, okay, her coach told her that, yeah, that it's gotten harder. And another thing is, has she gone through a growth spurt? I'm guessing that she has. So if, if she's gone through a growth spurt, she becomes less coordinated. So even though she's getting mentally tougher, her body's kind of having to climb this mountain of catching up and she has to get stronger to, uh, to catch up with the, you know, the new body that she's having to, to move around. Um, so, so her, my suggestion is like, just open up all of that. Is this what's going on for you? Is this what's going on for you? What do you want? What do you need? And then you can let her know where you're coming from, but really from a neutral place. And then just listen, listen, repeat her words back to her, listen to what she has to say and talk about her goals, you know, socially, physically, um, her coach told her that if she quits now, no real coming back. And yes, the growth spurt did happen. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to agree to disagree with her coach. Cause I've personally seen two girls come back and really enjoy their experience. I think they went up to level seven or eight. You know, it wasn't like this big, you know, like went to college and won. It, it was, they got to go back and enjoy their sport and fall back in love with it. So that's definitely a possibility, even if the coach doesn't believe it. So not saying she needs to take a break, but these are all just kind of options, you know, like you talk about it with her, open it up. I would say do a whole lot of sleeping on it so that you can make sure to have enough conversations. She's already in level eight. Awesome. You know, she can keep, she can keep moving through. She can stay put. There's, there are a lot more options than we are led to believe typically. Um, so here are the main reasons why kids want to quit. They're not having fun. They're not seeing improvement. There's too much pressure or they're not getting enough attention. And those, if you can remedy that, you know, find her fun, help her to see where she is improving. Because I'm guessing she's not seeing as much improvement as she's actually doing, especially since she's been like doing this whole mental thing. Um, pressure. Is there pressure? Where is it coming from? Is it coming from her? Is it coming from the coach? How can you dissolve that a little bit? Can it take the pressure off? Is she not getting enough attention because younger kids are more talented? Blah, blah, blah. Can you like help her to figure out what's what's going well and celebrate with her for her effort, of course, not just her outcomes. And and bottom line, if she doesn't enjoy it, if if it's because her schedule's too hectic or it interferes interferes with school or something she truly loves, then let her walk away. And otherwise, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of if you don't know, do nothing. Don't jump to any conclusions if everybody's in doubt. If you're in doubt, just hang out with it. And hopefully you guys will become more clear and the more that you can be honest with her, be neutral, don't force your agenda, then you're gonna be able to guide her to find her own intuitive path. All right, you guys, I'm out of time and I will see you again next week. Feel free to submit questions to Rebecca at performhappy.com. Oh, and if you want a free download this week, I have a report that's five things to never say to your kid after a competition, and you can download that for free at completeperformancecoaching.com slash five. All right, guys, see you soon.